We've got a composition. We've thought about it. We've sketched it a little bit. We got a night. Um, we have a basic idea, and I want to uh, use that composition to tell the story of a of this interior, the coffee shop where people are enjoying a cup of coffee, enjoying the atmosphere, getting some work done. Well, here we are at the old drawing board and getting ready for our, our project. The project this week is working from another cafe. And I'm using a vertical format, as you can see. It's a similar cafe that I've painted before. Uh, this time I wanted to try a vertical format to see if I could get a little more drama into the scene and play upon the reflections that fall across the tabletops and create this lovely pattern. And this is the main inspiration for this is the reflections that are cast from the, the bright light that's coming in through the window across the tabletop. And I, I wanted to try a vertical format. And so once I get the drawing in place, I can start to, to paint. And I'm approaching this from an underpainting, and that means I'm going to be painting with some colors, bright colors, starting off with yellow ochre and a bit of cat orange red. And um, on top of the drawing, isolating some whites and creating a, a bright underpainting that will shine through the darker layers that follow. This is typically... Um, a method for the watercolorist is to build up uh, layers of color. As watercolor is a transparent medium, we can take advantage of that, uh, especially by using some bright warm hues under uh, darker, cooler grays, or we can use very bright colors that are going to be followed by some dark, dark colors as in today's painting. Another aspect of this is I'm isolating some white shapes, uh, the white shapes being tabletops, the window in the back, some frame paintings hanging on the wall, and right away I get the impression of a, of a strong uh, center of interest and a strong um, light shape uh, to be surrounded by darks. And this helps me to remain with a sort of abstract image for a long time, uh, rather than feeling the need to start to portray realism or um, specifics, I can stay with a more general aspect and think of everything that I'm painting basically as an object or a shape and not necessarily a figure, a cup, or a window. This is helpful to the visual artist because uh, the strength of the painting comes from an organization of shapes and sort of their abstract um, manifestation in the painting. If you can stay with this abstract quality f for a, a longer duration, your, uh, your, the strength of your painting is actually uh, improved, made stronger. So have a look. I'm, I'm starting to place some cups and saucers. I know they don't look that way, but I'm thinking now about reflections and dragging a line all the way down to get a nice positive reflection across the tabletops, whether it be the figures in the chairs or something that's on the table, uh, doesn't matter. And the position of these reflections is more important. Staggering them, making one um, break up towards the end, one have a little color into it, all these things. And so. This is why I like to work <clears throat> without uh, uh, the reference in front of me sometimes, is I can be a more pure painter and um, be very sensitive. I feel like can be more receptive and more in tune with the painting when I'm not copying what's in front of me, but rather improvising 
on uh, the sketch that's there in my memory of the scene. One thing, uh, well, to, to be able to do this, yeah, I need to know my image very well. What that means is um, study. And this is an image that I've performed a number of times over the years. I've visited this coffee shop and used it as a motif for my painting numerous times. So I have a very strong memory of this coffee shop and how it's arranged and the relative position of things. I have a pretty good understanding of the figure and how to render the figure in a simple way, especially if they're, you know, it's a little simpler if they're sitting down. So all these things are, are visible in my mind's eye because of the amount of time I spent in understanding them. And the media of watercolor is great for improvisation because things happen that you don't expect. Sometimes, um, you know, if you're trying to paint what's in front of you, if you're really conscious of all the, everything that's in front of you, watercolor is really going to give you problems because it does its own thing. And there's always some unexpected interference or unexpected addition made by watercolor. So for the watercolor artist to be free, I think they really need to be in tune with their subject. And that means have a pretty good working knowledge of their subject and almost be able to paint without having it in front of them. For example, look at these cast shadows. These are cast shadows on the floor, but look at how the abstract quality that they have and the, the sense that comes through the brushwork the graphic sense that comes through the brushwork is possible because I'm free to do that. I'm not wed to the scene. I'm not um, trying to paint from a photograph. This is happening as it's being painted. I have a rough idea of what I want, but it's no, by no means certain when I start. Uh, it unfolds as it's happening, and th this is... Uh, I think a great analogy for this way of working is to think of a, a jazz trio or a, a group of musicians that know each other really well. It doesn't have to be jazz. It could be bluegrass. It could be anything. But the um, opportunity to improvise with a group of musicians that know each other well can kind of anticipate what's going to happen musically before it happens is when you get real magic in music and it's something that uh, you can't write down. It's actually is something that happens once and then <laughs> if it's recorded, great. If not, the audience has a unique memory. So do the musicians. And musicians, if you, do, if you ask them, this is something that they long for, that they strive for, is to be able to uh, release, sort of release their themselves and lose themselves in the music, especially with other musicians, and let something completely unexpected emerge. And oftentimes this unexpected quality is something special, uh, something extra that wasn't anticipated and that opens a door for, um, for the future too, because it creates a or it allows you to create, uh, see something in the moment, work on that something, and uh, open a door towards uh, a series or a number of paintings or a new technique or a way of rendering a hand holding a cell phone, whatever it is. And that's the beauty of working with watercolor.